Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. We are on the third Sunday of Lent. Our Mass presider is Reverend Father Albert Garong, SSP, to be concelebrated with Father Bob McConaughey. Please stand and join the choir in singing the entrance song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You should not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done than either by you or your son or daughter, 
or your male or female slave or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him might have eternal life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, 
as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all, and he did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ please be seated hi good morning everyone i'd like to thank father albert father albert and i and father paulo every week or one on thursday night advertisement on all the feast bay area and all the feast websites called biblioconia and father paulo father albert give a most excellent exegesis or explanation of the scriptures in preparation for Sunday. So I would encourage you to watch us on Thursday nights. We're halfway through Lent. Where are you right now with Lent? The Pope says to us priests, it's good for us every now and then to give a witness because we cannot have the sense that somehow you think that we've made it and all you have to do is follow us and you'll make it. That's not the truth. We're all in this together and all of us, including Father Albert and I, are called to conversion one day at a time. So I'd like to share with you a witness talk this morning and then apply it in a very simple way. Back in 1997, I had a heart attack and I thought my life was over. I really did, because my doctor said to me, my family doctor, who lived right across the street from the church, he said to me, Father Bob, I don't know what the odds are of someone your age having a heart attack, having a second one. What can I say, Father, except you're not going to live to be a very old man. Well, I'm 76 and still in the mix. Thank you. So I go across the street when I go home for Christmas. I ring his doorbell, he comes to it, and I say, I'm still here. <laughs> the most frightening night of my life was the night before surgery. I would be operated on, on a Sunday, quadruple bypass surgery, four of them. And all my friends were in, and they prayed with me. They prayed over me. I went to confession that morning. I received the sacrament of the sick, and they were telling me, within a month, you'll be running two kilometers. I was really enthusiastic to have the surgery. And then they all left. About an hour later, around 11.30 p.m., the surgeon and the anesthesiologist came in to see me. And they wanted to tell me, now tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., We'll put you to sleep. You won't feel a thing. And then told me we'll take the heart out of the sack and we'll stop the heart, but a heart-lung machine will take over. I'm listening to all this saying, I know, it's going to be nice. And then the surgeon used a word that I never like to hear a doctor or a dentist say. 
Unfortunately, Father, he said, things can go wrong. What, 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 what wrong? Nobody told me that. Well, Father, during the surgery, sometimes a piece of the blockage goes off and up through your carotid artery, and you can have a stroke. A stroke. I won't be able to preach anymore. Won't be able to speak anymore. Won't be able to work. Now I'm panicking, really panicking. Then he said, now, Father, at the end of the surgery, we have to restart your heart. We take paddles. I said, oh, yes, I've seen that in the movies. Well, unfortunately, Father, sometimes when we go to restart the heart, it doesn't start. And I said very naively, okay, what do you do then? Well, Father, then we usually call for someone like you. <laughs> but don't worry, you're going to do fine. And out he goes, and I'm there in total panic. Didn't say goodbye to anybody. I could die six hours from now. But then I said to myself, whoa, I have no control over what happens. So, Lord, I give it to you. Surrender it. If you want me to continue to be your priest, I'll wake up. If not, forgive my sins and take me home. Then I calm down a little bit. And long about 1 o'clock in the morning, the nurse comes in. Now, understand, I'm being operated on, on Sunday morning. So she was, they had to bring her in special because no one else is being operated on. And she came in. And she said, uh, okay, now the doctor has ordered this pill for you to calm your nerves and anxiety. And I said, no, I think I'm okay now. I, I, I said, I, I prayed and I, I'm ready. She said, really? I said, yes. Wow, that's an amazing attitude for somebody facing life-threatening surgery. There it was again, <laughs> life-threatening surgery. I said, no, I'm okay. And then I think she looked at my chart more closely. And she said, oh, oh you're a priest? I said, yes. Catholic priest? I said, yes. Uh-huh. And she started to walk out of the room, and I heard her say just loud enough that I could hear it, I used to be a Catholic. I said, whoa, 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 wait, come back, come back. I said, my sister's a nurse. You can't be a nurse if you're just in it for the money. You have to have a deep sense of compassion and care for other people. How did we lose you? No, Father, I don't want to tell you. You're a hard patient. I don't want to get you upset. No, I said, I really want to know. All right, I'll tell you. She said, a long time ago, I went to confession. As a matter of fact, it was 17 years before. She said, and I had worked up the courage for a couple months during Lent. Father, I have to tell you, I'm a lesbian. And I committed a very embarrassing sin. And so I wanted that to be the first sin that I confessed. And so I went in and blessed me, Father, for I have sinned. And, and I blurted it out. She said there was a line waiting to get in. And he raised his voice. You did what? And he began to lecture me and tell me how bad I was. And Father, I started crying. I didn't wait for a penance. I didn't wait for absolution. I got up and walked out. And I haven't been back since. I said, would you allow me to apologize to you? My brother priest would never treat you like that. And that priest has to answer to God. Pray for us priests who hear confessions that we will never let our sinfulness our moods get in the way of what the Lord wants to do with that penitent because he sent the grace of repentance and people come for forgiveness, not a lecture. And so I said, would you give us a second chance? I'll think about it. And out she went. I was kind of upset that that happened to her, obviously. But then I began to doze off and fall asleep. And long about three o'clock in the morning, the hour of mercy, I feel a tap on my shoulder. She said, are you allowed to hear confessions? She said, I had to get dressed up, you know. 
I said, yeah, sure. Well, she made a beautiful confession. And I said to her, now, I have to give you a very difficult penance. Oh, I deserve it. I said, no, I want you to listen. I want you to go to the CR. I want you to look in the mirror and see the woman that Jesus has entirely cleansed. And the penance is to say to that woman in the mirror, I forgive me too. That's it? Yep. About 10 minutes later, she came back and she said, I feel so light. The night that should have been the most frightening and was night of my life, I can tell you, turned in to the most joyous moment I have ever had as a priest. I never saw her again, but I know the Lord brought her to see me to bring her back home. I tell that story to you because sometimes it's so difficult to let go of the past. Do you ever find yourself going to confession and you feel kind of, I got to tell them that? And then you do, and he gives you absolution. Do you ever find that when you leave the confessional, you still feel guilty? You know why? Because we sense that we should be punished. But on the cross, Jesus took the punishment. So Padre Pio, who has heard a lot of confessions and now as a saint, said something revolutionary. This is what he said. He said, when you go to confession and the priest gives you absolution, leave joyously and leave the guilt in the confessional. And once you leave, don't think about those sins anymore. Don't get upset over them. Any temptation to do that is not coming from God. It is coming from Satan, who wants to discourage you. That's why in the book of Revelation, Satan is called the accuser. After we sin, he accuses us. Do you think God's still going to forgive you for that habit of sin that you can't get rid of by your own willpower? You might as well stay away from the feast. Stay away from confession. He's given up on you. Jesus in the book of Isaiah is referred to as the comforter. Though your sins be of scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. Red as crimson, they shall be made white as wool. I say that to you right here in the heart of Lent. That this year, might be different by a thorough cleansing. And people ask me, well, what if I go? Because some of you may have been hurt by a priest when you went to confession. And it's frightened you. It scared you. What should you do? If you go to confession and the priest raises his head, his voice starts to lecture you, speaks out loud that everybody can hear, what should you do? Get up and walk out and go to another priest. And if you're really charitable, you'll tell him why. Father, I'm here for the mercy which is always given when it's not deserved and forgiveness of the Lord. Please, give me your absolution. How shall I end this? I believe there's a poem that puts the witness and everything I just shared with you from Padre Pio, to be able to let go of the past, because it doesn't exist anymore, except in our minds, and Satan plays with that. So remember that, let it go. And anytime you're thinking about it, anytime you worry about it, it's not coming from God. He doesn't want you to think about it anymore. So you and I are called to remember the cross. It's a symbol of great suffering, but a symbol of unconditional love. You see, the Lord doesn't love you the way you should be. 
He loves you the way you are, but he doesn't want to leave you there. He wants to lift you up by your mercy. And Padre Pio said, after you receive absolution, only think of who you are now and what you can be for Jesus. I think this poem, which was written over 100 years ago, my favorite poem, puts it all into focus. I slipped his fingers, I escaped his feet. I ran and I hid, for him I feared to meet. One day I passed him, fettered on a tree. He turned his head and looked and beckoned to me. Neither by speed nor speech could he prevail. Each hand and foot was pinioned by a nail. He could not run nor clasp me if he tried. But with his eyes, he bade me reach his side. For pity so thought I, I'll set you free. No. Take up this cross, said he, and follow me. This yoke is easy. This burden, light neither hard nor grievous if you wear it tight. And so do we follow him who could not move uncaught captives in the hands of love. Please stand. We profess our faith, I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the Father that we may offer true worship and present ourselves as his living temple. In a spirit of humility and trust, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Church continue on the path of purification and conversion so that in every way it becomes a community of praise and compassion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May our religious and civil leaders see in Christ the power to save and the wisdom to lead, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May those preparing for baptism and reception into the Catholic Church, be mindful that discipleship is a call to help others. May they find freedom in God's steadfast love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May we respect our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit. May we shun acts of lasciviousness, violence, and other indignities that harm the human person. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord give healing to the sick, comfort to the dying, conversion to sinners, and light to those experiencing darkness in their lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, cleanse our hearts of selfishness. Help us to love and serve you in faithfulness and truth, and to show this by our concern for others, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We bring 
Please stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Able to do so, please place your right hand on your chest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jesse, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co to eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Oh, 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now, it Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And I'm not the under my roof, but only, but only say, say the, the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. For an orderly receiving of Holy Communion, please allow our ushers to guide you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in ministry may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, before I give the final blessing, I'd like to give a simple invitation. 
Uh, on, first of all, I'm very excited to meet all of you at the Lenten Recollection organized by Feast Alabang. Uh, I will be one of the speakers. Thank you for having me there. And I'd also like to invite you to a recollection that we are organizing on March 16, Saturday. That's us at the Society of St. Paul. You probably met Father Paolo and me and some other of our priests. This is on March 16, Saturday, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. It will be featuring different speakers like Maris Omali, Romer Chuka, and Father Paolo as well. I will be there, but I will be doing coffee. If you're wondering why is that, pumunta na lang kayo para malaman nyo kung bakit gumagawa ng kape si Father Albert. But I hope to see all of you there. So it's a fundraiser. Tickets are at 600 pesos, but we have eight wonderful speakers for all of you. For more information, kindly go to St. Paul's Online on Facebook or just go to any of our branches nationwide. You can inquire about tickets there. Once again, March 16th, Saturday, 2 p.m. Thank you. And kids ages 5, 5 to 12 years old are invited to join the Awesome Kids Ministry at the Laguna Ballroom, simultaneously held with the feast session. Parents may approach the Awesome Kids Ministry servants at the foyer. Thank you. In behalf of the entire Feast Alabang District family, we would like to thank our Mass presiders, Reverend Father Albert Garong, SSP, and Father Bob McConaughey for celebrating the Holy Eucharist with us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant that your servants disgrace. Abiding in love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill all of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father Bob, kindly join me for the blessing. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Come, let us sing, let us praise the Lord, and gather in His altar to worship His name. Come, let us pray, let us open our hearts to receive His blessings and to feel His love. Let us kneel down and thank Him for all that is done, for all in our lives. Come, let us sing, let us praise the Lord, and gather in His altar to worship His name. Come, let us pray, let us open our hearts to receive His blessings and to feel His love, to receive His blessings and to feel His love. Sunday and welcome to Feast at Home. You are tuning in live na live po tayo ngayon dito sa Feast Bellevue AM here at the Bellevue Manila. Magandang umaga po. My name is Ken Chavez from the Feast Alabang Singles and Young Adults Ministry. Sa ating mga weekly viewers, alam nyo na ang gagawin ninyo. But for those of you who are watching for the first time, yung kanina nag-mask lang tapos biglang may artista sa harap ninyo. Di ba? Welcome po. Hindi pa kayo nagkamali ng pinanood ngayong Sunday. We are the feast. Ano po ba ang the feast? The feast is a weekly gathering of the Light of Jesus family. Sino po ba ang LOJ? It is everyone. Lahat po dito, welcome. Yeah, di ba? Libreng, libreng, libre po ito. And baka lang po, no? Baka lang. Uy, parang sinasabi nyo, 
Ang sarap pumunta dyan. Ang sarap umatend. Ito po yung ating mga schedules. Every Sunday, we have our 8 a.m. first mass followed by our first fee session. At uh, right now, we just finished our 11 a.m. second mass and we will have our second fee session happening in a bit. At ngayon po, ang ating talk ay talk number one na bang series. Ang title is Confused Army. Oh, acting yan. Diba? Confused Army yan. Uh, this morning, no, we will have a very powerful worship, a very powerful talk. Kaya abangan niyo po yan. But for now, ito po yung ating mga announcements. In just a month, apat na linggo na lang po, we will have our Holy Week Recollection. Entitled, Complete. Guys, this will be happening in the Phil Investent and we have our tickets on sale. Okay, may bayad po ito, may tickets po ito. You can get your tickets at www.fadhwr2024.com Ayan, di ba? Yan po, ay, dito lang din sa my Phil Investent. But, uh, we will see each other sa ating Grand Easter Feast Celebration also at the Phil Invest Tent entitled Finish. Okay? Pero ito po, libreng libre po ito. Yan, guys. Wag, wag lang kayong pumunta. Invite your friends. Invite your family. Kung nagbabalak kayo na gumala kung saan-saan, wag muna. Magsama-sama muna tayo. Diba? Let's enjoy God's love this coming Holy Week. Alright? So keep those comments coming. Diba? We want to know po. Hello, Tita! Ayan, diba? Hello po. Good morning. Keep, let us know saan po kayo nanonood. Saan po inaabot ang ating live stream dito sa Feast at Home. And, ay, si Tita Bati, diba? Sumasayaw-sayaw. Guys, baka lang po kita ninyo. Ang dami pang upuan sa likod. Ang dami pa. Diba? Sino upo dyan? Kayo. Tarot na dito. Diba? So anyway, send those comments. Uh, mention your friends. Birthday greetings. Prayers. Send those stars. Dahil madaming naaabot ang live stream natin. Ang inyong mga... Uh, diba? Ang daming, daming nangyayari. Diba? So guys, kayo na lang po ang ating hinihintay dito. Right? O oh, diba? Ayan, ayan. Ang oh, daming nangyayari. Guys, we also invite you to serve. Kung wala naman kang ginagawa, every Sunday, join us. Diba? Join us here. Help other people. Love other people. We invite you to join our small, humble, and loving family here at Feast Bellevue AM. Pero again, right now, stay tuned for God's love that will go through your screens this afternoon. Alauna na nga pala. <laughs> Tangali na nga pala. Remember, whoever you are, wherever you are, however you are, you are blessed because you are loved. Happy Sunday, everybody. See you soon here at the feast.
na tayo. Excited ba na ba ang lahat? Dapat mag-excited may ticket na tayo. Amen? <laughs> Ayan. So, may konti lang akong ano, uh, short story lang. No? 2018, nag-attend kami. We started attending kami ng family ko. We started attending the feast 2018. And we really wanted to join a ministry. So lahat kami, gusto namin, music ministry. So, syempre, merong isang mga requirements. Uh, ang ilan dyan, yung video uh, audition na ina-upload natin sa isang close group na page. Yan. So, we submitted. Unang tinawag si Bro Vic, sumunod si EJ, si Izawi. Natira kami ni Toby, actually. So, ako medyo parang downhearted ako, hindi ko matanggap. Bakit, Lord? Anong, anong mali sa akin? Parang hindi pa ako tinatanggap, tinatano, tinatawag para mag-serve, no? And, hinambol ako ni Lord. I was humbled by God. Because I know in my heart, medyo may pagkamainipin ako, eh, no? So in my case, I have to wait. So that was 2018. Ang, ang pangarap ko lang, ang pangarap ko lang ay makaakyat ng stage. Pinaakyat naman ako ni Lord. <laughs> I'm one of the chorus dito. If you still remember, may mga chorus dito, no? So I was one of them. So okay na, masaya na ako doon. Sumunod. Sabi ko, Lord, sana makahawak naman ako ng mic. Ayan. Pwede mo humawak ng mic, hindi eh. ka nga lang nakakanta kasi hindi ka pa assign, no? But, dininig ng Panginoon ang panalangin ko. Hindi lang yun ang binigay niya sa akin. No? Last year, I was called to serve as one of the worship leaders ng Feast Bellevue. Hallelujah! Sabi ni Lord sa 1 Peter 5.6, Humble, yourself, humble yourselves under the 
wings of the Lord's mighty hand so that He will lift you up in His own good time. Amen? So if one of you are praying for something, no, humble yourselves. Kung gusto niyo umangat yung business, humble yourselves. If you want to be promoted sa isang company, humble yourselves. No? And tun, yun ang key. The Lord will lift you up. Amen? So this worship, I want you to just enjoy the presence of the Lord. Later on, we will invite the Holy Spirit and just fill you in. No? And I just want you to sing to God. Sabayan nyo kami if you know the song. And just enjoy the presence of the Lord through this worship. Amen. As we do our sign of faith, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father God, we thank you for your marvelous deeds, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, for continuously giving us the grace, Lord, to be humble in any situation, O God. We thank you, Lord, for calling us by our names whenever there is service, O Lord. Or kung saan na pwede po namin ipakita ang kakayahan namin para sa inyong kadakilaan, O Lord God. Just want to lift up to you everything, O Jesus. And for this worship, I lift up to you, my brothers and sisters, O Lord God. Continue to dwell in them, O Lord God. Because you are worthy of all our praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve praise. Worthy is your name.
close your eyes. Feel the touch of the Holy Spirit. And when you feel that touch, let it revive you. Let it heal you. Let it anoint you. Let the Holy Spirit just dwell in your whole being. And continuously praising God. Exalting Him forever and ever. today as we listen to your word as we follow you amen give the lord a big hand bless his name thank you jesus thank you lord are you ready to be blessed today let's pray our favorite prayer in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen together today i receive all of god's love for me today i open myself to the unbounded limitless overflowing abundance of god's universe today i open myself to god's blessings healing and miracles today i open myself to god's more like jesus every day i am god's i am god's powerful champion and because i am blessed i am blessing the world in jesus name 
Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Put your hands upon your heart, close your eyes, bow down your head. Lord, speak to me today. I need to hear your word. Touch me today. I need to feel you. Fill me up. I will listen, I will follow, and I know I will bring home your miracles today in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand. Bless His name. Thank you, Jesus. Habang umuupo kayo, tingnan yung mga katabi nyo at sabi mo, you look wonderful today. Have you noticed our fonts? Napansin niyo ba yung font ng mga ibang words? No? It's a little messy. Why? Because we are starting our brand new series entitled Messy Church or Saints. Tingnan niyo nga yung katabi niyo, mukha bang santo yan. Ha? Messy Saints. No? We are going to have or deep dive into the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. But you need to know things before we study this. Ito yung series natin, ha? You need to know about this letter of St. Paul to the church in Corinth. Ang pangalan ng lugar ay Corinth. Ang pangalan ng mga tao, Corinthians. Parang tayo, ang pangalan ng lugar natin ay Pilipinas. Anong tawag sa mga tao? Filipino. Yan. So, Corinth, tapos sila ay Corinthia. Sinulatan sila ni St. Paul. Ano ang dapat mong malaman para pag binasa mo siya, mas maintindihan mo siya. So, we need to give you some context. This is the first one. When you read the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, it is like reading gossip. Chismis. What? May chismis sa Bible? Meron. Oh, papaliwanag ko sa inyo. Parang ganito. Nakaupo ka, sumakay ka sa UV Express. Di ba sa UV Express, dikit-dikit ang mga tao. Tapos yung katabi mong girl, naglabas ang cellphone. Tapos, accidentally lang natingnan mo. Accidentally. Talaga? Nakita mo. At ito ang conversation niya sa isang lalaki. Ito. Tingnan niya. Nagmi-message silang dalawa. Sabi nung lalaki, namatay daw boyfriend mo. Sumagot yung katabi mo. Oo, nasa funeraria. Ngayon ang wake niya. Condolence. Sagot yung babae, thanks. Ang hirap nga, but I need to accept na wala na siya. Sumagot. Pwede bang ako na lang ang pumalit sa kanya? Aba, may blush pa. Sagot ng girl na katabi mo, ewan ko lang kung papayag ang funinarya. <laughs> di ba? Yung may katabi ka, nakikichismis ka, nakikirinig ka, di ba? Once you read it, yun ang unang konteksto. Ha? Bakit? Because in Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, he mentions the dark secrets about them. Merong dark secret, yung dapat tinatago na, pero sinulat. By the way, para maintindihan nyo, Corinth, the church in Corinth, is not the church that we think now, na malaki, may mga ID sa mga tao, no? Each home church, home churches po yan, maliliit, parang feast light natin. Hindi ganito. Each home church yes. would have between 10 to 30 people. Tapos, pag ginader mo silang lahat, siguro mga 150 members, maliit na grupo lang. So, ganyan ang itsura. Ito yung second thing you need to know. 
It is a private letter. But it's read by millions up to now and up to the future. Private letter. Sinulatan sila. Itong 150, sinulatan at pakibasa sa harap ng mga taong ito. Pwedeng gathering o isa-isa, basahin. Paano natin alaman private letters? Paul knew these readers, this community, intimately. Kilala ni St. Paul. Kasi he was with them. He started this Corinthian church and he was there for 18 long months. Tapos pag binasa nyo yung Corinthians, may mga ano yan eh, inside details that you will not understand. May mga pangalan na hindi mo kilala. Pero kilala ni St. Paul. Kilala niya silang lahat. Kaya sinulatan niya at binabanggit niya yung mga pangalan. Eh? Now, after 18 months with them, buo na yung church, maandar na, St. Paul has to leave them and start other churches in Asia Minor. At habang nag-uumpisa siya sa iba, biglang may sumulat sa kanya, galing sa Corinth, tungkol sa problema sa iniwan niyang Corinthian church. Yan. So, magot ngayon si St. Paul. Yan yung the letters of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Third, one Corinthians is actually not the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. It is not. Pero but one Corinthians? Kasi hindi na natin alam kung nasa yung mga unang letter si St. Paul sa kanila. Nawawala. Siguro, dahil private nga, nung sumulat si St. Paul, yung unang-unang sulat niya, pagdating doon, ang nakakuha ay yung involved. At doon yung pangalan niya, kaya tinago na lang niya, wag nating pakalat ito. Chismis ito. <laughs> Naintindihan niyo? Para, siguro, ha? Well, I'm not sure. But this is not the first of the letters. But we need to put it the first letter of St. Paul. Kasi wala naman tayong iba. Kasi may second. Kaya may first, merong second. Imagine, sa classroom nyo, ikaw ang third honor. Grabe. Ilang kayo? Tatlo. <laughs> huh? But it's third honor ka. Di ba? You will find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, that St. Paul said, my previous letter to you. Ba, may previous pa. Corinth was in crisis. May problema. Kailangan sulatan. Hindi, po, hindi niya mapabalikan. Layo na. Dami niya ginagawa. Susulatan ko kayo. Number four is this. It contains answers to the five troubles of Corinth. Buti hindi ako si St. Paul. Kung ako yan, hindi yan. I will not discuss five troubles. I will write Five, six troubles. Ha? Kung ako yun, ha? merong limang problema itong Corinth na kailangan sulatan ni St. Paul sa kanila at sabihin, ito yung mga problema nyo na alam ko. At ano-ano yan? Number one, disunity. Number two, sexual immorality. Another is legal disputes. And then abuses in the Eucharist. And finally, doubts on the resurrection. Five things. Imagine, 30 to 40 years after the death, resurrection of Jesus, the early church was facing many problems already. Kakaumpisa pa lang, nagkakaproblema na. So imagine you are part of this Corinthian church. Ikaw, na-imagine mo ba na yung mga problema nyo dyan sa maliit ninyong church ay maisusulat sa eternal book in the Bible? No. Pero itong tanong, bakit piniyagan ni Lord na itong problemang ito mailagay sa Biblia para basahin nating lahat? Hindi naman natin problema yan. Yun ang akala mo. Kaya piniyagan ni Lord, ilagay yan. Bakit? Kasi problema mo rin yan bukas o ngayon. Tingnan nyo yung katabi nyo. Tingnan nyo lang. Mukha bang may problema? Wala. Ang galing. Bakit? Kasi hindi yan totoong tao. Ha? Pag buhay ka pa, may problema ka. 
Kaya God made it happen that this letter will be part of His eternal book. And it is ironic that the letter of their failures start this way. Let us begin reading St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, di natin kilala kung sino yun, ha? to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Sa mga taga Corinto, you are sanctified in Christ Jesus, and kayong mga taga Corinto, you are called to be saints. Ang galing, yun ang umpisa, bago niya sabihin ang lahat. Kayo ay mga santo. So, tingnan niyo ulit yung katabi niyo. Mukha bang santo? Malayo, ano? Kaya messy saints. Who are parents here? Can you see the hands of parents? Parents, have you done this to your children? After they have done something wrong, may ginawang mali, tinawag mo, tapos itong sa bago mo pagalitan ng kung ano-ano, sasabihin mo sa kanya, anak, Bakit mo ito ginawa? Ang bait-bait mo naman. Paano nangyari ito? Bago mo sabihin kung ano yun, na alam mo na, sasabihin mo sa kanya, di ba, hindi ka namang ganyan. Hindi kita pinalaking ganyan. Tatawagin mo yung anak mo, anak, bakit ka baksak sa Pilipino? Pilipino ka naman. No? Litong-lito ka talaga. No? Ganyan na ganyan si St. Paul. Bago niya sabihin, Hoy, ang gulo-gulo niyo, kung ano nung ginagawa ninyo, sinabi niya, you are sanctified in Christ and you are called to be saints. These disobedient, self-centered, toxic people who were ruining the plan of God were now saints, present tense, and called to be more saintly, future tense. Let me give an analogy. Yung kapitbahay namin, nagpa-renovate ng bahay. At dahil nagpa-renovate sila ng bahay, nagugulo ang mga kapitbahay. Ganun naman yan, di ba? Magpapagawa ka, maa-istorbo mo. Nagpapaalam naman, magpapagawa kami ng bahay, maingay kami, okay naman. Minsan, alas 7, ganda ng tulog mo eh. Biglang, gudidilat ka talaga eh. Ano nangyayari? May nagdi-drill, may nagmamarti. Alas 7. Ano oras ba ang trabaho? 8 a.m. 7 a.m. Nagtatrabaho na. So pag tinanong mo, ba't ang aga niyo magtrabaho? Wala ho kami magawa. <laughs> ha? Kami rin, walang magawa. Pero tulog kayo. Matulog kayo. Gulo. Buti kung yun lang. Napaka maalikabok sa buong lugar namin. Dahil nagagawa ng bahay. Alikabok. Alam nyo, hindi ganito ang balat ko last week. Alikabok talaga. Huh? Nagugulo. Bakit? Under construction. In the same way, you and I, God knows that we are all under construction. Alam nyo eh, may ginagawa si Lord sa iyo eh. May inaayos si Lord sa iyo. Why? Because God is your builder. He is your architect. He is your designer. And you are the house He is building. And you are under construction. Can you put your hand upon your heart, everybody? Sabi niyo, I am under construction. I am under construction. Tapikin mo yung katabi mo, sabi mo, you are under construction. <laughs> Kaya pagbibigyan niyo ng konting inaayos ni Lord yan, yung buhay niya. Inaayos sa Kanya. You know, in the same way, God is also building His church. And it is also under construction. Kaya ang ganda na yung Corinthians, first letter, ng mga kapalpakan nila, hawak natin para sabihin sa atin, yan ang tunay na simbahan, under construction. Look at me, please. There is no perfect church. There is no perfect feast. Meron at meron kayong makikitang hindi maganda. Meron. 
Lalo na kung mapuna ka. May mga tao mapuna eh. First time mong mamit yung tao, titingnan mo agad, ulo hanggang paa, paa hanggang ulo. Yung ganon, very critic. No? Paa, ulo. Ano, ano ba ang paa at ulo dito? No? <laughs> diba? Diba? May ganyan eh. No? Napaka-critical. May makikita ka because there is no perfect church. Wala. Yung perfect church, fairy tale. This is the truth. While we are on planet Earth, God's church will always be chaotic. It will always be messy. Because we live in this sinful world. Ewan ko, be honest. Minsan ba nangyari na sa inyo to, yung nagalit ka ng konte, o kaya nagdabog ka, may ginawa kang mali, tapos sabi sa iyo ng katabi mo, o ng kamag-anak mo, kapamilya mo, kaibigan mo, o, oh, kala ko ba, nag-feast ka na? Ba't ganyan ka pa rin? Amini. Ang malala, kala ko ba, feast builder ka? Yun ang malala. Ha? Ay, nako. We cannot justify it. It's a mistake. It's a wrongdoing. Mali. We ask forgiveness. But the answer could be, if I am perfect, I do not need this church. That is why I go to the feast. Because I am messed up. I am messy. And I need the grace of God. Kaya sinisiksik ko yung sarili ko kay Lord. Bakit? I'm under construction. Hindi pa ako perfect. Kaya nandyan ako. Kaya sige Lord. Now, let us dive into the problem. The first big problem, the biggest actually, the problem of Corinth is this. This unity. This united sila. Ang konti na nga lang, this united pa. Di ba? Ang konti nyo, hindi pa kayo magkasundo-sundo. Can you say immune system? Let me give you an analogy. Immune system, ito yung armies in our body that fights the germs and the virus. Yung mga army natin, panlaban natin sa mga virus, sa germs, nasa katawan natin yan. Ganito po yan, ha? Pag kayo ay may sipon, yung immune system mo, yung mga sundalo mo, nakita yung germs mo o virus mo, tapos nilabanan nila, niyakap nilang ganon. Kaya sticky ang sipon eh. Tapos sabi nung katawan mo, ilabas mo ito. Para hindi ka lalo magkasal. Kaya eh, nilalabas. Bakit ka inuubo? Lumalaban yung katawan mo sa mga virus at germs at sabi, iubo mo para lumabas. Huwag lang sanang lumipat sa iba. Ha? Bakit ka nilalagnat? Sabi nung katawa mo, sunugin natin yung virus, sunugin natin yung germs. Yun. Kaya mainit ka pag may sakit ka. Kasi may nilalabanan. Ito ngayon. The problem is this. When your immune system is confused. If your immune system is confused, akala niya, yung healthy cells mo are the enemy. Pag may healthy, lalabanan. Ang tawag nun, autoimmune disease. Now, let me go to the church. Let me go to us. When we, followers of God, are fighting each other in church, it's like the church has an autoimmune disease. We think that the other members in the church are the enemy. Kalabang ko yan. Eh, magkakampi tayo. Tingnan nyo nga yung mga katabi nyo. Look around. Look far. Magkakampi tayo. Kahit nag-aagawan kayo sa siyomay. <laughs> magkakampi tayo. Baka siyomay ka na last week. Pagbigyan mo naman ng iba. Kasi magkakampi. Pag, pag feeling mo, kalabang ko to, eh, kakampi mo yan. Ba't mo inaaway? Magkakasama kayo sa pamit. Kapatid mo yan, ba't mo inaaway, kapatid mo? Asawa mo, ba't kayo nag-aaway mag-asawa? Kalaban ko yan eh. Hindi mo siya kalaban. Ang kalaban mo, yung kabit mo, yun ang kalaban. Ha? Di ba? Now, St. Paul says, let us continue. 
Now, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind, same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean, ito na, tinumbok na niya, ano problema niyo? Is this. Each of you says, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Kephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? What is happening here? What is the disunity? They are playing favorites. May mga paborito na sila sa mga apostles ni Jesus. Yung iba ang paborito nila si Kephas. Sino si Kephas? Peter. Yung iba ang paborito nila si Apollos. Sino si Apollos? Magaling mag-preach. Yung iba ang paborito nila si Paul. Kaya sabi ni Paul, talaga, pinag-aawayan niyo kami. Pinag-aagawan niyo kami. But let me tell you this, preferences are normal. That you prefer this rather than that. That is normal. Let's be honest. You be honest. Bakit kayo nandito sa Feast Bellevue na to? Dahil favorite niyo ako. Aminin na ninyo. Huwag kayo masyadong pumalakbak. Baka maniwala ako. <laughs> BTS. Sino yung mga armies ng BTS dito? Ito. Tingnan niya. Oh, mga armies. Ayan. Sino ang bias niyo dito? Oh. Tingnan niyo mabuti. Sino ang bias ninyo? Hmm. Di ba? Meron, kahit pito yan, meron ka pa rin bias. Kahit pag tinignan mo sila, parang, parang magkakamukha naman. <laughs> Lahat kamukha ni Jackie Chan. Di ba? <laughs> huh? Inasabi ko sa anak ko, anak, pare-pareho naman ni magkakamukha. No? Talagang. Ako ang bias ko si V. Bakit? Yun lang kaya kong sabihin pangalan. Nalilito na ako dun sa iba, no? Kaya si V. O, oh, ito, maging anes. Punta tayo sa mas bata-bata. Ito. Sino kayo dyan? Wala. Sabihin mo na lang sa kanila. Sinong Vilman yan? Wow, ayaw umamay. Iba, pero nakaganon, no? Sino mga Noranians? Ayan, o. Oh, kita nyo. Meron kang bias, di ba? Preference mo yan eh. O oh, ito, mas bata-bata pa. O oh, ito. Hmm. Sino mga Toyota? Toyota fans. Ayan. Sino mga Chris Barrett Manizer? O oh, kaya, kita mo. Meron. Meron pa. Ito. Nalakas mo talaga, Joji. Ano? Nakaping, nakaping ka, brother. Sabi nga. <laughs> Meron kang, di ba? Wala naman problema. Preferences are okay because it's human nature. This will be the problem. If your fave, your preference, they become more important than your community. Pag yun ang mas mahalaga, ay wala. Wala. Hindi yan gagana. Itong pinipindot ko, hindi talaga gumagana. No? <laughs> wala. The same. The same slide. Uh, do you get this? Pwede naman may preference ka, pero pag pinaglalaban mo na yung preference mo at the expense of unity, ay, sandali lang. Ako yung lasalista. Ako yung graduate ng lasal. Ako yung professor ng lasal. Ang asawa ko ay taga-UP. Nung naglalaban ng lasal at UP, ano kami? Magkalaban. Di ba? 
Pero pinapabayaan ko ang asawa ko na ano, sige, manalo kayo. Minsan lang naman. <laughs> eh, di na talo. <laughs> Naintindihan nyo? Yung minsan may preference ka, pero pag pinipilit mo at the expense of unity, lagot. Lagot tayo niyan. Kaya si St. Paul was saying, Paborito niyo si Apollos. Paborito niyo si Peter. Paborito niyo ako. Pinag-aawayan niyo kami. Talaga? Talaga? And then St. Paul mentioned something very, very important. By the way, Corinth, ang composition ng mga members, ha? iba-iba kasi yan eh. When you talk about Ephesians, iba ang mga miyembro. When you talk about Colossians, iba ang mga miyembro dyan. Sa Corinth, Ito ang miyembro nila. May mga Jews, may mga Greeks. The Greeks, they grew up, what? Believing in wisdom. May, meron sila mga finafalo na mga wise people. Ganyan sila mga Greeks. Ang mga Jews, iba. Ang mga Jews, Moses, the law. Kaya magkaiba to. So how will he speak to them? Oh, ganito yan. Pinag-usapan nila. Okay? So, napakahalaga is unity in the family. Unity in the church. And this unity is the biggest ache in the body of Christ. Nako, ito, this is a study done by the global Christianity. There are 45,000 denominations and non-denominational churches. Napakadaming Kristiyano. Pag tinanong mo kung ano-anong pangalan, May mga pangalan tayo sa mga parokya, pero we are one church, Catholic church. Pero the other denominations, ang dami nila kung ano-ano. Kristiyano, kaya simulat sa pool, ay, ano ito? Bakit tayo disunited? Kaya, look at me please, huwag tayong papayag na sa ating simbahan, sa parokya, dito, ay merong disunity. Wala, lahat ho tayo dito, mayaman, mahirap, we are all here. Meron ba kayong napasukan na simbahan na merong discrimination? Yung pagpasok mo, merong, ano yan, yung tumutunog, tututututututut sa airport, detector. sa mall, oo, yung detector na pagpasok, tututut, muslim, muslim, bawal, ganun. <laughs> Wala, di ba? Kahit sino pwede. Mga aso nga, naglalakad sa simbahan, eh, uy, katoliko yan, ganun, di ba? <laughs> Wala. Sa simbahan ba natin, merong okay, lahat na mayayaman, dito kayo sa area na to, may electric pan. May hirap, banda dun. Walang electric pan. Sanay na kayo sa init. Meron bang ganun? Okay, kumunyon. Hmm. Lahat ng mayaman, dito ang pila. Katawan ni Kristo. Lahat na mahirap, sa kabila. Buto na lang ni Kristo. Meron ba? Anong tinatanggap nating lahat? Katawan ni Kristo. Pare-pareho. Kaya si St. Paul sabi niya, talaga, ang konti nyo nga lang, hindi pa kayo magkakaisa. What is Paul's advice to the conflicts in Corinth? You will be surprised. St. Paul could easily tell them, Uy, Get along with each other. Ooh, seek for unity. Ano ba yan? Enter into dialogue. Listen and then talk. Talk and then listen. No. Instead, he went straight to the core of the issue. What is it? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom. Ang nagbabaptize si Peter, si Apollos, ang kaling mag-talk. Me? Sabi ni St. Paul, I am here to proclaim the gospel. Tapos si St. Paul, hindi magaling mag-talk, ha? Huh? There was one time in a church, he was talking to them for, kasi aalis na ako, sabi ni St. Paul. You listen to me. I cannot come back here anymore. Nag-talk siya, napakahaba. Eh, hindi naman siya kasing galing ni Apollos. Alam nyo, sa third floor sila, siya nag-talk. Tapos merong isa, nakaupo sa bintana, Dahil sa haba ng tok at nakakaantok, nakatulog itong lalaking ito 
at nahulog sa third floor. Patay. Patay. Nagulat sila. Dali-dali silang bumaba. Tapos nakita ni St. Paul, patay. Alam mo ginawa ni St. Paul? Pinray over. Binuhay niya yung patay. Tingnan niyo ako. Hindi ako magmarunong bumuhay ng patay. Kaya wag mo akong tutulugan. Ha? Lagot ka. <laughs> Hindi ako si St. Paul. Naintindihan niyo? So sabi niya, oh, iba-iba kami. Da, pero itong ganda ng sagot niya. Oh. Let's go back to the reading. So that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. Not us, but the cross. Huwag kami sinusunod niyo. Yung cross. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Look at me, my dear friends. Paul's advice on how to resolve their conflict was this. He was telling them, go back to the cross. Go back to the cross. I want you to think about this many times. Whenever we have unresolved conflicts, it is because we have forgotten the cross. Kaya nag-aaway ang mag-asawa, nag-aaway ang magkakapatid, nag-aaway ang pamilya, ang organisasyon, ang simbahan. Bakit? We have forgotten the love Jesus gave to us on the cross. We have forgotten the call to die on that cross. Nakalimutan ng krus. Alam mo, naalala? Sarili. I am right. You are wrong. Yan naman eh. That is the root of all conflict. I am right. You are wrong. Diba? Kukuha pa ng kakampi. Diba? Yung mga tao naman, uunga. <laughs> Tapos yung kalaban mo, kukuha ng kakampi. Diba? Sila naman, uunga. Huwag kayong sasali sa uunga ministry. Guguluhin yan ang grupo ninyo, ang pamilya ninyo. In conflict, we think we are wise. The other person is foolish. And about this, St. Paul says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The discernment of the discerning, I will thwart. Wisdom. The Greeks, wisdom. Oh, wala yan, sabi niya. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. You know, when we have lingering divisions, usually it is because we believe we are right, the other person is wrong. But at the foot of the cross, sa harap ng krus, all arguments, all allegiances melt away. Wala lahat. I want you to check your life. May mga conflict ba? O madalas nagkaka-conflict. Gusto ko tingnan niyo, baka masyado kang naniniwala na tama ka. Silang lahat mali. Ako'y tama. Mga nanay, mga tatay, sa pag-deal sa anak, minsan ganyan tayo. Palagi nating alam lahat. Anak, papunta ka pa lang, pabalik na ako. Kaya sabi ng anak mo, kaya kayo bumalik, naligaw kayo. Palaging tama. Nakita mo yung anak mong babae, umiiyak. Nilapitan mo, mami. At sabi mo, anak, o, oh, umiiyak ka na naman. Pag-ibig yan, ano? Sabi ng anak mo, opo. Oh, anak, makinig ka kay mami. Ako ang expert pag pag-ibig. Alam mo, sagot ng anak mo, talaga po, expert kayo. Wala naman kayong ex. Isa lang, si daddy pa. Siya pa napili nyo, expert kayo niyan. Eh, yung anak nyo, nakalima na na boyfriend, grade 4 pa lang. Sino ngayon ang expert? No, palagi kang tama, di ba? Mag-aaway kayo mag-asawa. Papagalitan mo yung mister mo, sabi ko, kumanan ka, ba't ka kumaliwa? Away! 
Kasi kung maliwa siya, eh dapat kanan. Ikaw nagtuturo eh. Eh yung pala yung kali, palikot lang. Di dun din nagkita. Umiyak pa yung mga bata tuloy. No? Naintindihan niyo. Pero sinong tama, sinong mali, pag hinarap mo yan sa cross, <laughs> mas tama ang Diyos kaysa sa inyong dalawa. Tama o tama? Tama o tama? Let's continue. For Jews demanded signs, Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. The Jewish culture, you prove you are God through signs. The Gentile or the Greek culture, you prove it by showing your high wisdom. Sabi ni St. Paul, I am proclaiming Christ crucified. It is a failed sign to the Jews. Why? Sign ba ito? Ang sign nila, hari, na magtatagumpay sa gera, patay. Anong sabi ni Paul? Oh, matatalino kayo mga Greeks? Ayan, foolishness yan. Namatay, hindi nakalusot. Paul was telling them, the goal of Christianity is not wisdom. The goal of Christianity is not to have doctrine, theology, no. The goal of Christianity is to die on the cross for community. Sinasabi ni St. Paul, mamatay kayo sa sarili nyo para sa iba. Yun ang pagsunod kay Kristo. Kaya lang, pag punong-puno ka ng sarili mo, hirap mamatay. Can I see again the hands of parents? Parents, please. Yan. Mga anak, katabi niyo ba yung nagtaas ng kamay na yan? Magulang mo ba yan? Tingnan mo mabuti. Yan ang nanay mo. Yan ang tatay mo. Namatay yan at namamatay araw-araw para sa iyo. Palakpakan natin ang mga nanay at tatay dito. They are dying to themselves. Grabe. Wala ako last Sunday kasi nag-Disneyland kami sa Hong Kong. Ganun talaga pag mayaman. <laughs> Ubus pera namin. So, ang dami kong labadang tatanggapin this week. <laughs> no? Sabi ng mga anak ko, we want to go to Disney. Ganun. Two days. What? Two days. Two days. Lakad-lakad sa Disney. Sakit na mga paa. Buti kong bata pa ako. Hindi na ako bata. 35 na ako eh. No? Sakit sa paa niya. Pero saya ng mga anak namin. Sobrang saya nila. Kami nila lay. Sige. Buti sila lay. Nang tapang. Sakay ng sakay. Kung ano-ano. Ako. Malakas. Tagahawak ng bag. No, sakay kayo. Dito ako. Ganun. Nakatuwa, lakad, picture dun sa mga tao, yung mga character, the princess. We were there for many days, sacrificed a lot of things. Money, yun ang magulang eh. Nakakatuwa nga, baka nandito ka kapatid. Siyempre, sikat, dami nagpapapicture sa akin. Para ako si Mickey Mouse dun. <laughs> Pagliko, brother, gano'n, oh, picture, okay. Mamaya, picture, gano'n. Nagsuot ako nung ano, nakakatawang alien na green. Kasi sabi sa akin, suot mo to. So ako naman, sunod. Tignan nyo na lang yung mga stories ko, tsaka anak ko, grabe suot ko. Bigla, oh, brother, sabi sa akin, <laughs> huli. <laughs> oh, tanggal ako, picture tayo. Tapos habang nagpipicture, anong sabi niya? Brother, kaya ka pala wala sa feast. <laughs> Nandito ka. Ako naman, oo nga. Ikaw din, wala ka sa feast. Alam mo, sagot, al- alam mo sagot niya, nandun ho ako. Kayo lang ang wala. Sacrifice for your children. Children, look at your parents. Tingnan niyo, pagod na yan. Pero nagtatrabaho pa rin. Bakit? Kasi nag-aaral ka pa. Kasi may pangarap ka pa na gusto nilang ipor. Parenting is practicing to die to oneself. That is what parenting is. 
Sabi nung nanay dun sa anak, Anak, hindi ka ba nahihiya? Tawag ako ng tawag sa iyo para walisin mo itong lugar na to. Hindi mo ako pinakikinggan. Text ka lang ng text dyan. Tapos kinikilig-kilig ka pa. Alam mo, sagot ng anak, Mami, mas nakakahiya naman kung ako ang mag-uutos sa inyo. <laughs> Tapos ikaw yung nagtitext, kinikilig pa kayo. Alam mo, sagot ng nanay, ako na nga lang magwawalis. Dying to oneself. Serving God is dying to oneself. Alam niyo ba yung mga servants dito? Matataas na tao yan. Mga boss yan sa kumpanya nila. Owners of companies. But they are serving here. As humble as they can. Di nyo lang alam. Dinadaan-daanan nyo lang sila. Pero mga sikat na tao yan sa kumpanya nila. Sila pag umutos, sunod lahat. Dito, silang inuutusan. Dying to oneself. Friendship is also dying to your... Sino rito may mga kaibigan? Taas mo ang kamay. Taas kamay. Tingnan niyo yung katabi niyo. Pag hindi nagtaas ang kamay, kaibiganin mo naman. <laughs> ha? Kawawa, walang friend. Ha? Di ba? Friendship is what? Tinitiis mo yung weaknesses ng mga kaibigan mo. Parang ganito. Oh. At mo kayo. Pero yung isa, plastic. <laughs> Talagang plastic. Di ba? It is dying to oneself. St. Paul was saying, you want unity? Oh, die to yourself. Away ng away. Bakit? Ang bida, sarili. Sa pag-aasawa, ganun din. Ako, you die to yourself. Binibiro-biro natin yan palagi, na? Happy wife, happy life. Di ba? Pero... Binsan talagang, you die. You, your preference, ikaw na masunod. Okay lang yan. Lit na bagay. Pag prinsipyo, pinaglalaban. Pero preferences, pinapayagan. Minsan sinisingit mo yung preference mo, pero nagpaparaya, dying to oneself. Kasi mas mahalaga yung ano, unity kaysa preference. Mas mahalaga na yung community kaysa sarili. Let me really go dive. Can you stand up, everybody? Paul then gives his mic drop. Alam niyo mic drop? Dinadrop lang yung mic na ganun. His mic drop moment to this very unique appeal for unity. He still talks about the crucified Christ. But this time, he was talking about the cross in his life and in the life of the apostles, the Corinthians were fighting over. Sinabi niya, kami, pinag-aawayan niyo. Ito. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all. Kami ang huli. As though sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to mortals. We are fools for the sake of Christ but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we are in disrepute. To the present hour, we are hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless, and we grow weary from the work of our own hands. When we revile, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. We have become like the rubbish of the world, the dregs of all things to this very age. I appeal to you then, be imitators of me. What is Paul saying? Follow me please here. Kami, pinag-aaway-awayan ninyo. Kami, na mga paborito ninyo. Kami, na feeling nyo, galing-galing. Ang totalino, ang babanal, kami sa harap ng krus, kami ay basura. Basura. Rubbish. Kaya, hali kayo. Sama kayo sa amin. At sabay-sabay tayong maging basura sa harapan ng krus. 
ewan ko pa kung magyabang ka kung basura ka. Nakakita na ba kayo ng basurang mayabang? Yung talagang, huw, saya ko, yabang ko, basura ko eh. Wala. You are special in the eyes of God. Ha? Tandaan niyo yan. But when pride is coming out, please remember, you are rubbish. La. Yan pinag-aawayan nyo, hindi nyo na maalala yan, pagtanda mo. Yan, yan nangyayari sa inyo. Yan posisyon mong yan, mawala rin yan. After many, many years, decades, you will not be remembered. I'll give you a proof. Sino pumatay kay Magellan? Sino po? Lapu-Lapu. Sinong kapatid ni Lapu-Lapu? Hindi nyo kilala. Bow. Hindi ka maalala. At nilalaban mo pa. Many of our res- unresolved conflicts come from pride. Yabang. It is one thing to prove your worth, your name, your reputation, your principle, your rightness apart from God. And so today, I invite you to go back to the cross. Stand at the foot of the cross. Stand there. And let the Lord tell you the truth. You know, you, you believe that the Lord is going to restore you. He says in His Word that He is going to lift up the humble. So, Lord, ikaw nang bahala. Tama man ako. O mali siya. I will eat my pride and I will just be with you on the cross. My dear friends, you cannot make your life about you anymore. You cannot. You no longer insist that you're right, the other person is wrong. Because you trust God that He will be the one who will exalt you. He will humble those who humble. He will exalt those who humble themselves. And today, God wants you to work for unity in the church, in your family, in your workplace, in your friendship. Nag-isipan mo yan. Doon ka sa harap ni Lord. From now on, unity is not an option. Unity is your mission. Unity is your mission. Go back to the cross. Paglapit mo rito, naku, wala. Sinaktan ako, Lord, eh. <laughs> Tingnan mo siya. <laughs> Duguan niya. Ikaw ba may dugo? Wala. At sakit sa loob. <laughs> Di ba masakit sa loob to? Iniwan ng mga kaibigan. Ang taas ng tingin ko sa sarili ko, eh. binaksak ako. Eh. <laughs> Mas mataas to. Diyos to eh. Pero ba't niya ginawa ito? Para sa iyo. Go back to the cross. Go back to the crucified one. And you will have peace. This is God's desire that you will have great relationships surrounding you. How? He wants to humble you. So humble yourself. Eat your pride. Mahirap yan. Tingnan niyo ako. Mahirap. Kung feeling mo, hindi ka basura. Kahit itong linggong to, punta kayo kay Lord. Sabi niyo, Lord, hindi pa ako basura eh. Konti pa. Konti pa. Hindi ako basura. Meron pa eh. Kaya ang dali mo masaktan. Ang dali mo mainis. Hindi ka basura eh. St. Paul was saying, kami mga bida, we're rubbish. We are rubbish. And once you receive that, once you embrace that, you will have peace of mind, peace of heart, and peace in this world. Yung maaway sa inyo, let the Lord process that person. Yung mga taong gumugulo sa inyo, let the Lord deal with them. But God wants to deal with you today. Go back to the cross. Put your hands upon your heart, close your eyes, bow down your head. Let the Holy Spirit continue His message for you today. Holy Spirit, we are ready for your complete message for us this week. Show us. Bring us to a situation wherein we will humble ourselves and lead us all to the cross. Lord, 
Baka marami pa sa amin dito, feeling namin, hindi kami basura. Mayabang pa kami. Humble us, O oh God. Give us the grace to be humble. Lead us to your cross. Brothers and sisters, all your concerns, all your troubles, your worries, offer them all at the foot of the cross. And as you offer, surrender, and worship Him. God is here. God is here. Just surrender. Continue to worship our Lord and exalt Him. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. Let us all extend our hands towards our first timers. Father God, we thank you for our brothers and sisters who came here for the first time. We pray, O God, that they may come back again, Lord God, next week and to the next week, O Lord God. Nawa Panginoon, ipatuloy niyo pong basbasan, Panginoon, na kanilang buhay, O Lord God, kanilang pamilya, Lord Jesus. And arrange their schedules, O God, so that they may come here every Sunday here at the feast. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ayan. Praise the Lord. Ayan po, para po sa ating mga first-timers. 
Um, pagbaba niyo po later on, ano, uh, allow us to get to know you more. Meron po kaming uh, maliit na regalo po para sa inyo. Yan. Um, we invite also those who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries for the month of March. Ayan. Tayo po kayo. Ayan. We pray over po namin kayo. Ayan. Anniversaries and birthday celebrants for the month of March. Ayan. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us all extend our hands towards our birthday and anniversary celebrants. Father God, we thank you for our brothers and sisters who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries. We pray, O oh God, to bless their lives, O oh Lord. Continue to answer all their prayers, O oh God. And thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for the gift of love. May you continue also, Lord, to bring them here every Sunday, O oh Lord. In your name, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Ayan. Okay. So focus your eyes on the screen and let's uh, watch the video. My most fearful experience was actually getting the virus, getting COVID, because I had to isolate. The fear was so powerful and it was very difficult to pray. Why? Because all I could think of was I'm elderly, I'm in my 70s. All of these fears go through me, and I'm sure those of you who got COVID had similar experience, but the Lord got me through it. The only thing I could say in my prayer is, I trust you with this, Lord. I trust you. What moved me to write the book was that we had a common experience, even though we were socially very distant from one another. We experienced fear, we experienced worry, at times hopelessness, at times inability to pray, at times loss of a loved one. And my homilies grew out of that experience. The main reason I wrote the book is so that we would learn from that experience together, that we will have a companionship as a result of it. And my hope is that we can learn from it and grow much, much stronger and that God's perfect love will continue to cast out our feet. This is my third book. It's called Stronger, Homilies to Lift You from Your Fears. It's completely different from Closer and Deeper, my first two books, because it's born of our collective experience and bringing hope to those experiences. So you can grab a copy of my book at thesebooks.ph at Lazada and Shopee. So I hope you'll do that and I think you'll be happy that you did. Feasters, to launch his new book today, please help me welcome Father Bob McConaughey. Hello again. You see me limping. What happened is two years ago, I fell coming out of my CR and went straight on my back. And so I have lower back pain and nerve pain constantly in my feet, so I walk like an old man, even though I'm only 76. But I have just a few minutes to talk to you. I just want to mention one thing in one of the chapters in the book. You know, in life, you and I are always challenged to produce. Produce good grades, produce at work, produce at home. And in our prayer, we produce too. We say our rosary, we say our chaplet of divine mercy, we say our prayers. But you know what? Our Lord is kind of saying to us, when is it my time? So one of the chapters in my book is called Summons to Your Surrendered Place. A place where you don't have to say anything. A place where you just have to be and enjoy God's presence and sense his love. You know, Pope Francis, he's 87 now, and, and, and he says sometimes at the end of the day, he's exhausted. And he goes to the chapel and the Eucharist is exposed and he said, I don't have the energy even to open my book. That's the way you and I can be at the end of the day. And he says, so what I do simply is I meditate on Jesus looking at me with great love. And he says, most of the time when I do that, I fall asleep. But I wake up 20 minutes later and I don't feel guilty because during that entire 20 minutes, I know Jesus never took his eyes off of me. In my book, I show a way that you and I can come to our surrender place and just be quiet in the midst of all the noise that we hear. 
Because it's then that we choose God. That's what you've done today, and St. Benedict says, that to choose God is to become aware that you are known and loved beyond anything your imagination can conceive. Known and loved before anyone thought of you, before anyone knew your name. That's the truth about you. And every night, I'm going to give you a way to be embraced by someone who loves you that way. So after the session today, I'll be downstairs near the entrance of the hotel, and I'll be launching my book. If you would like to have me sign it, I'll be happy to do that. If you don't have time, I'll understand that too. Uh, let me just say that it's a joy to be with Brother Arun, with all the servants, this magnificent music ministry, and to be with all of you. So I look forward to you, hopefully to see you downstairs, and let me be the first to wish you a joyous Easter. God bless. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Father Bob. So again, po, Mamaya, he will have a book signing for his book, Stronger. Are we going to buy his book? Yes. All right. So for some of our announcements, guys, apat na linggo na lang po, Holy Week na collection na magpalakpakan. We're so excited for this annual recollection that you don't want to miss. We continue to invite you to our Holy Week recollection with the theme complete on March 28 to 30 at the Phil Invest tent. Diyan lang po sa katabi. If you haven't bought your tickets yet, bakit? Biro lang po. But you still have time to secure one. Just log on to www.fadhwr2024.com or, or, kung medyo hindi daw po kayo teki, di ba? Meron po tayo mga angels, no? Diyan sa ating I Give Table where you could buy tickets. Okay, guys? We only have limited tickets, so book your tickets now. So may bayad po tayo, may ticket po tayo, but, everybody say, but! Ayan. After our three-day Holy Week Recollection, we will be celebrating our grand Easter feast with the theme finished still at the Phil Invested. And the best news is, ask me what? It's a planet. It is completely free. Yes. So save the date, March 31. We hope to see you all both in Holy Week Recollection and in the Grand Easter Feast. Diba? So, sino po dito yung mga antakal na pong umaaten ng Holy Week Recollection? Ayan, diba? Sino yung for the first time aaten na po ng Holy Week Recollection? Ayan, yung may tatatas po ng kamay ng it's an annual tradition that uh, we celebrate here at the feast, diba? And, ayan, kinukulit po ako ng ating mga healing ministers. Tingin po kayo sa likod. Ayan, we have the healing ministry at the back. If you want to be prayed over or if you know someone whom you want to pray over, punta lang po kayo sa kanila. Gustong gusto po nila kayong ipag-pray. Okay lang po ba yan? Yes? Pakasabi po sa katabi, see you sa Holy Week Recollection! See you! And that's it for the announcements. Thank you so much. Have a happy Sunday, everybody! Thank you. Let's all stand for our giving. Lift up your tithe, your offering to the Lord. If you're giving online, just lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, these are your children ready to give to you what you deserve. Receive this, O oh God, with joy, because we, we give this to you also with joy. Multiply this to bless your people in their business, at work, in their families, in their travels. Just bless them, O oh God. Use also this, what we're about to give for your greater glory. This we pray and claim in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, brothers and sisters, with joy. Give! To the Lord.
Wonders of your love, love that gives me peace. 